Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be wrapping up all of the books that I read in the month of June and the things that I got up to in the last month. Let's just dive in with the normal stats that I put at the beginning of my wrap ups. So I finished six books in the month of June as well as DNFing, so not finishing two books, which comes to a total of 4,006 pages. I think that's a give or take a little bit because I wanted to include but not include some of the DNFs because obviously I made it I read a good chunk of them so they're sort of in there and as well I did start two books as well um but didn't get loads of the way through so I think when you put in the, like the DNFs and the ones I started it comes to roughly 4,000 pages which is a very very strong reading month for me very very strong uh probably one of like the biggest page counts that I've read this year so very good work there so of the books that I finished two of the books were epic fantasy books and four of them were fantasy romance I was very much at the beginning half of the month in my fantasy romance era and then I think I've transitioned into my like epic fantasy era right now like epic fantasy is where my mood is at now like the fantasy romance mood was really there and strong at the, in the first half and now coming into July I'm like I really want the fantasy all of the books were adult so of my ratings I had well two three 4.5 to five star books uh so within that over four star mark uh, and then two four stars one two 2.5 star and the two dns so generally the bulk of what i read was in that four stars and above range so really good quality books that i read this month and i did do some dnfing i'm not really much of a dnfer but maybe that's what I'm going moving towards uh, because I DNF'd a book last month I've now DNF'd two this month maybe I'm just being a little bit more picky uh, and I think it's working out my favourite because I was like looking at my stats for my, my media book free out tag and things and I've read a lot of books that I really enjoyed this year and like four stars and above so it's definitely a much better reading year than last year and maybe that's because I am DNFing books out of these I continued in three series which is very good I did a lot of continuing I finished one with DNFing a book I started one new one which puts my on the go still at 31 so still need to really work on that but I did do a lot of work on continuing on in series may not have got to the ones that I wanted to in terms of finishing series those ones are still on the TBR if you've not seen my July TBR you will see the long-standing bone shard war and chain of thorns which are still loitering around but I did do quite well with getting not quite up to date but like continuing on with things before i get into the books the middle chunk of the month i was on holiday for two weeks in canada so uh, that was very very exciting absolutely loved it wish i could go back on holiday and do it all again uh, i think i will put some clips at the end of the video of all my holiday highlights so that can be at the end if you are interested in staying around and looking at my holiday then that'll be at the end and I, I did meet up with some booktubers in vancouver so Kyle, Theo and Jake. Uh, I will leave all of their channels down below if you're interested in checking them out. Uh, but that was really fun, met up with them for a drink, but for more holiday things at the end. And then aside from that, the rest of the time, it's just been working and day to day and actually summer's sort of here now. So thankfully the weather has brightened up. Into the books, I figure we can just start with the DNFs uh, and the ones that I have decided not to finish. I got 75% of the way through the Blood Gift, so the second book in the Blood Trials duology. I just decided that I wasn't interested anymore. So I was reading this before I went away on holiday, uh, listening to the audiobook, because I had heard quite negative reviews for this, uh, the second book. So this, this is the first one, which I did enjoy and gave it like four stars for this first one. And I do think the pacing in this series is just not quite right. And that's where it's fallen short. But yeah, I got 75% of the way through before my holiday and I probably would have finished it if I had another day to listen to it I then went on holiday for two weeks by the time I came back I was like I really I'm not interested in finish, finishing this anymore it's been two weeks I have no desire to pick this back up I think we're just going to leave it so that's where I'm at where I, I just I have no no desire to get back to it and find out how it ends in this series we're following a main character Ikenna who at the beginning of the first book her granddad dies and she is going through that grieving process until she finds out that he actually was potentially murdered so she enters into this training academy to find out who his murderer was um, and it's a very brutal academy she is hiding a, a secret that she has blood magic which is banned in the world that she is in because uh, blood magic is seen as part of the enemy kingdom that she is training to fight i think the plot in this is very very interesting and i think there was the really great grounding blocks there for a story i think there are lots of really good elements to this but i think it was rushed 
and I think this should have been a trilogy. I think that the pacing in this series is just wrong. Um, it's just not quite right. That the this first book should have ended two thirds of the way through, then the final third of this and maybe the first third of the second one should have been a book and then there should have been a third book because the way that it was, it was just paced so weirdly and I feel as though I really saw that going into the second book that the the moments of tension, the moments that you got right at the beginning of the first book felt like a third act conflict. And I was like, I just feel as though she had a trilogy and she's been told she has to squash it into two books. And so it just felt disjointed. That's unfortunately where it fell short. And I just sort of started losing more and more interest as the book went on so much so that I just, I think I'm done with it. I'm done. So unfortunately, this series has not been so much of a success for me and I feel like this is quite a common opinion. I don't think I'm alone in thinking this. I feel as though quite a few people have thought that the second book was a disappointment and potentially that was due to publishing forcing it to be a duology but uh, a little bit unfortunate here. And then the other DNF is Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardoust. Bashar I think I have outgrown this book. So this is a YA fantasy with uh, Persian influence and we're following a main character who is deathly to the touch so as soon as she touches someone touches someone they die and it's set in this sort of Persian inspired world um, and she is a princess there her, her brother is set to become the king and they have imprisoned a what's it called Deva Jin in the uh, dungeons and so she is hoping to find out why she is cursed to have this touch as she has been told all her life that it is the Jin Davis that have cursed her as a child. And I did find, I just found this quite young. Like I really love Davis Jin's this sort of mythology within books because I love the David Bad trilogy, but I felt as though this just read too young for me for, for right now. Maybe if, if I had read this a few years ago, I'd, I would have really, really enjoyed it. But as of right now, it didn't quite work. It sort of felt as though it was going down the love triangle route one relationship was developing very very quickly i was like you've literally just met and you have these sorts of relations these sorts of feelings already i was like this doesn't make any sense i don't get it uh how you're already trusting this person i don't understand how you are both so attached to each other so quickly and so it just read very young it read quite young which if you are a teenager it, or if you are part of the ya demographic then i think potentially this is a really good one that you could enjoy. But for me, I am not that demographic anymore and it just wasn't quite working for me. Unfortunately, because it's a very pretty book and I wish I could have enjoyed it. And I think when I went into this, I was like, okay, it's only, it's 300 pages. I can, I want something that's quick and easy. I can read through it very, very, very quickly. It will be fun. But maybe I just wasn't in the mood. Maybe, maybe actually my mood was I was not darker because that's where I'm at right now. I'd very recently picked this one up and I'm in the mood for much darker fantasy and this was not delivering darker fantasy. So I got to about a third of the way through 110 pages. I'm actually in mid chapter, so it show, shows that I didn't even get to the end of the chapter. Next up, I did work on quite a few series this month. Uh, I did do quite well with continuing in series. Uh, so I continued in three separate series here. Uh, so two of them I started towards the beginning of the month, which was the War of Two Queens, the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series. This one was quite a disappointing one. This was my sort of two, two and a half stars. Uh, I started this one in May. Yes, I did. I started it in May, got maybe like 100, 150 pages in, put it down again. And then I started with the audiobook and finished it off with the audiobook. And I definitely got through it a lot quicker with the audiobook. I found that a much more enjoyable experience reading it physically, but I am quite disappointed in where this series has got to, considering how much I really thoroughly enjoyed the first two books in the From Blood and Ash series. And I did really enjoy the prequel, which I, which I, which I read last year, but I just feel as though Jennifer L. Armentrout does not do a very good job at maintaining romantic tension, uh, that she has really um, gone to town with uh, making these books as long as possible and adding more and more books to the series. And now I just, there's, there is no romantic tension there. There is none. Uh, and I don't think the fantasy elements in it are strong enough to make up for a lack of romantic tension because fantasy is not a strong suit in these books. 
If you don't know, this is a fantasy romance series following main character Poppy and Hawk. Uh, Poppy has been raised in seclusion until events in the first book sort of propel her out of her seclusion and she starts to realise that what she's been taught all her life is not accurate. Then the world sort of expands and you get introduced to lots of different magical creatures and you find out what's about the history and the lore of the world which I still think doesn't make that much sense but this one it it again it dragged on a bit like the third book it dragged on a bit it had quite a climactic ending um but part of me's thinking that I might just give up on this series now I just I don't know I don't know whether I try the second book in the prequel series but um part of me's just thinking that there are better fantasy romance series out there that are sticking the landing more than this one. It has just gone downhill. It's just gone more and more downhill as it's gone on. Unfortunately, um, it really should have stuck with being the trilogy or the four books that were originally planned. It did not need to be expanded this much. I also continued in the Ninth Reign series by reading the by reading the Bitter Twins by Jen Williams. This one I really enjoyed. The Ninth Reign is a quite genre bending fantasy series. Uh, where we're following a cast of characters in this world which every few hundred years or so there is a war or a reign with this sort of alien race that comes down um, and at the beginning of this book we are following a cast of characters that are going to different relics from the last reign and going exploring within them and looking at that history and that law of that of time uh, so one of our characters is this human ex explorer one of them is a witch that has escaped from uh, the witch prison. Uh, and one of them is a vampire-like figure. And in the history of this world, and when it, the last reign was happening, vampires were uh, had a lot of power uh, and they were well revered. Uh, but now their race is dying out. They used to feed from the sap of a golden tree, uh, which which died at the end of the last reign. They then started feeding off human blood, which still continues to give them their long lives, but for some of them, it kills them. Lots of interesting elements within the series, lots of genre bending elements, sort of horror with some sci-fi, but fantasy. I really enjoy our cast of characters. I enjoyed the direction of this one. I think there were some elements of middle book syndrome and sort of the characters getting separated and them going off on sort of their own mini side quests. Yeah, I'd say this was like a side quest book, that there was quests over on one side, quests over here, quests to try and figure out this. But I'm thinking like the third book will sort of join them all back together and we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it's really interesting in this book as you follow perspectives from both sides of the war and you sort of see both both sides uh, and why, what they're fighting for. And I think that's very, very interesting. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I think it was very, it was it was fun to read and a very engaging writing style, which I enjoyed and looking forward to finishing off this series. So this was, this was good. It was a very solid sort of four star book. And then the final series that I continued on in, in June was The First Law. So I read Before They Are Hanged. I keep wanting to say Before They Were Hanged, not Before They Are Hanged, but it's just a, if I do say word, then sorry, sorry. It's just, I just keep wanting to say that instead. So the second book in the First Law series, I really, really enjoyed this one. So I think it's more than four stars, but it's not quite five stars. So it's like 4.5, 4.25 stars. Uh, I really enjoyed the direction of the characters. Potentially this one is a series I feel like could grow in rating once I finish it. And I feel as though people do say that their book does like bring it all together. I am enjoying the direction that we're going in with our characters. I really do like the characters in this series. Like is a, is a bit of a weird term. I like reading about them. I don't think I would like to be friends with them. I don't think I really, quite a few of them I wouldn't want to uh, come into contact with, but I really enjoy reading about them. So this is a fantasy story. We have, again, a cast of characters and we're set in this, in this kingdom. Um, and in the first book, uh, we follow people in the north um who are traveling down towards the center of the kingdom we have glockter who is a torturer who i guess has more to do with the politics within the world we have giselle who is a not fighter but like a a fencer a sort of uh within the king's army uh but more of the sort of but has never actually seen any real fighting uh we follow logan who is coming down from the north who is trying to warn 
the empire that the north is rising and there is a threat from the north we follow Baez, who is a magician from the old time who is a very interesting character who sort of has his own agenda and i don't we don't really know too much about him we follow pharaoh who is a very feral character uh very angry and in this one i really enjoyed the direction of the plot i would say i still have questions i feel as though is where we're going to get to where this is going to end but uh, i enjoyed the plot that we went through sort of the politics that glotta is is dealing with the different wars that are going on with both the south and the north and uh, the journeys that people are going on uh, and so very very intrigued to get to the third book in the series i'm really, actually really looking forward to reading the third one and um see where this series ends but very thorough very thoroughly enjoyed this one I'm still not finding it overly funny. I don't know why. I, I don't know why. Because people say this is funny, but I'm not finding it overly funny. Uh, I don't think it's really like hampering my enjoyment because I'm still really enjoying it. I'm just not finding it funny. Does anyone else not find these funny? <laughs> and then we are now getting to the point uh, where I talk through uh, what I binged and where I really diverted from the TBR and just went my own way and went a little bit rogue. Uh, so all of those books I guess were relatively like on the TBR, I was sticking to my plans, I was working on my series, uh, but I just had the urge, I had the call, the siren call of new books and hype got to me and I went on a bit of a Carissa Broadbent uh, rabbit hole uh, reading machine mode uh, and I read three of her books so Th this really worked for me it really really worked for me which is why i just kept going with it and why i feel like potentially i might continue with this train later well in july august over the summer because this really really worked for me i started the crowns of neaxia series which the first book is serpent in the wings of night which i feel is very much talked about on the internet right now really very very popular uh, so this is the first book i then read the novella uh, Six Scorched Roses, followed by the second book, The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. So this in total is going to be a six book series, but made up of duologies. So I did start and in some ways finish this duology, but I do know that there's going to be many, many more books within this world. So I'm not really counting it as like a completed series. There is a, another standalone that's already published in this series, which I haven't read yet. I believe it will be next year the next book start coming out. So The Serpent and the Wings of Night, we're following our main character, Araya, and she is the human daughter of the Vampire King within this world. So it is a vampire fantasy, but set within a completely fantastical world. So nothing paranormal about it. She feels that her life is always threatened, or always a threat because vampires are stronger and more powerful than she is, uh, and they're always after her human blood. So she enters into these trials, which are run every couple of hundred years, and the winner gets uh, to make a demand from the goddess, or get a gift from the goddess, a boon from the goddess of vampires. And so she enters into this, uh, knowing that only one person can win, and everyone else is either, well, killed, most likely, or potentially they can get to withdraw, but most likely killed. It's a very dangerous trial that she's entering herself into and then we follow her through these trials so i find i find that trials are very very quick and fast to read because you're com you're compelled to keep going to find out how that trial is going to end and what's going to happen next and as this is a fantasy romance series she does encounter rain who is one of the other participants and we are following their relationship as it develops knowing that they are both co competitors within this trial and i really did enjoy their dynamic enjoyed the way that tension was built up in this and I think the fantasy elements were done really well as well that uh, it is a fantasy romance series but I think the fantasy elements were were, were strong which is, is very important for me because if it's just romance then I get bored so I think this was done well and I think she managed to keep that tension that romantic tension in the second book which it's very good for me uh, because a lot of the time I can get bored when a couple gets together uh, but actually the tension was really there in the second book as well and potentially the elements in this one were even stronger uh, as in the fantasy elements that this one was very much focused within the trial whereas this one was looking at more and more of the politics in the wider world and had much more overarching larger consequences for the elements in this. I did really enjoy both of these. I flew through them. I found them very, very enjoyable to read. I also read the novella, which follows uh, a set of characters which make an appearance within the second book. So 
it was fun. This one was very much more romantic led, I'd say, that it was a smaller, more romantic novella. And then we do see that this pairing within the second book, which is why it gets right between them. Uh, but I found it fun. Uh, I don't think it was enjoyable as the core books in the series, but it was definitely fun to read. And I would recommend it if you if you're planning to read the series, then you read the novella as well. So I had a lot of fun with this. I had so much fun with this. Uh, and that I think is some I, I read for enjoyment. And this was definitely fulfilling enjoyment. Uh, it gave me so much fun to read this so so much fun they were so enjoyable i was so invested in these characters in the world and where it was going to go talking about this makes me want to go out and buy the next one and read that one uh, because i had such a good time reading these books and i would really recommend them if you enjoy fantasy romance uh because i think they're very very good ones and i think it really works that they are the the plan is to do these in duologies based on my feelings about romantic pairings and them get, and getting and, and me getting bored when they get together having a wider world set over multiple books but made out of duologies means that you have you're able to keep the tension you're able to keep the tension uh which you don't get when you have many many books in a series following the same character because at some point they're going to get together and that's when i get bored so really thoroughly enjoy this and would recommend and then i did start a couple of books i didn't make too much progress in them so uh very very minor i did start uh blood century part one this was whilst i was away i very quickly realized that i wasn't in the mood for this so this was after reading those chris and broadbent books i was like oh let's continue with the fantasy romance and then i was like actually i think i'm going to read before they're hanged and i was like this is a very different vibe so obviously my mood was not it this was a mood thing it's not a book thing so i got like 60 two pages in 60 yeah 62 pages in decided that i wasn't in the mood for this one switched to before they are hanged uh so i will definitely come back to this one uh, and get back to it it's on my july to be up it's on in the plans but just put on pause temporarily and then i have started in the last couple of days my reread of the forgetting moon finally so this was my final series to start in 2023 or the first six months of 2023 because that's how i plan to do it that i do uh, six months of series to start so i got about 150 odd pages into this one it is a 700 something page book uh, so i've got a long way to go but uh, it's really i'm really happy that i finally dive, diving back into this series and uh, stephanie from stephanie's book first and i are going to be reading this together and then hopefully be able to discuss it afterwards uh, but this has been a lot of fun so far uh, giving me the same feelings that i got when i read it a couple of years ago uh so very much enjoying this and really happy to be back in this world and with these characters again so look out for this one at the end of july quite a chunky june wrap up but those are all of the books that i read in the month of june let me know how your reading in the month of june went and thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my future videos bye